putting things down to find that championship mentality to say, you know, it's okay that I'm in lane eight. It's, you know, just to go out there and get a medal, man. It's, it's, it's a humbling experience. Definitely, man. I'm thinking back to, like, Olympics last year. You know, you were disappointed not getting the medal there and then the four by one and everything. Yeah. What does it feel like to you to do that with, with Mar, your teammates? Man, it, it's it's a blessing because we talk about it all the time at practice. Uh, everybody know, like in 2016, we both went out of the sport. You know, we left. Uh, I got hurt dealing with everything that we've done. And it's mad. Like, we talked about this day, every single day at practice. And it's, it's just a humbling experience. Man. And you always talk about like your faith and everything and how that pulls you through. Yes. How did that get you to this moment right now? In the final, you're on the line. What was going through your mind? Man, I, I constantly thought about Psalms 118.6, man. It says, when God is with me, who should I feel? What can man do to me? Uh, what I represent when it comes to Christ, I don't put on a facade. My Bible is with me, three of them. I'm into the, I'm into the scriptures. I'm into Elohim, Yahweh. See, that's that's what I represent, man, at the end of the day. This is not no it's not no gimmick. See, at the end of the day, I do this for God and God only. I would die behind this word, and it gets me through day in and day out. I think in the first round, seven guys. said three of them. I got no, I got no else to say. <laughs> real, real, real Hebrew text. Yeah. You seem pretty emotional yeah. on that victory lap. Like, when did it hit you, um, the emotions? Oh uh, man, just when when I seen the names come up, it's, it was just a blessing. Uh, like I said, it's been a long time since I even seen a podium. Uh, and man, I honestly, I, I'm still lost for words. Uh, right now, I'm just thinking about you know talking to my mom, uh, talking to my coach about how we can build from this and just keep moving forward. How it drives you? What drives me? Yeah. God, man. That's I had to really understand that growing up. Uh, I felt like I could do everything on my own and had to realize that my source and my energy come from the Most High. Man, it's. It gets real dark when things don't go your way, and you gotta understand what to lean on. You can't lean on yourself because you're not strong enough. You can't lean on nobody else because at the end of the day, the scriptures tell us, look, we gotta turn to him, not man. So to be able to understand that as a, as a young adult, man, it gets me through all those dark times. It gets me through all those dark nights. So it, that's my motivation. I was talking to Rena, uh, yeah. or not Rena, but I think someone in your camp a few, a few years ago about yeah. when you first joined them. I think your first like tryout basically was in a parking lot yes. in Montreal, I think, in 2019 yeah. to show them you were still. What do you remember about that? So when I made the decision to leave my group and go to and go to Rena, uh, I told them that I wanted to make this move quick. So I actually flew up to trials with uh, Andre, which uh, doing his trials at in Canada, and he told he told the trainer to to meet with me in uh, in the parking lot. And he told me to hop on one leg and I couldn't hop on one leg. And then when he told me to hop on both, I couldn't hop on both. Like that's how bad the Achilles was. So when I made the transition to go to Germany and be with them in Bochum, literally it was Monday through Sunday, 9 a.m. all the way to two. And that was just running training and rehab. And then from three o'clock to five o'clock was weights. And that was every single day, all of the end of 2019. And then going into the fall of that, Monday through Saturday, early morning to late afternoon, treatment all the time, doing the work. It was hard. It was very hard, but uh, I'm happy that it got me to this point. Why do you think they took a chance on you when you can't even hop on your legs? That, that man, that's that's a mystery that we may not ever know. Cause I'm gonna be honest with you, the doctor told Raina not to take me. Like he told, he said this kid, his numbers are down. He doesn't look like he's gonna make a return. His his injury is just too bad. And then in 2020, when I ran 990 and 987 wind dated, he was even shocked. Me personally, I don't know what I gotta do to keep proving people that God is real. But everybody who doubts, like he, God shows himself every single time. Every single time. Even to myself, when I wanted to retire and I didn't want to keep running, God came into my life and he showed me that I could do anything that's possible with him. Every single doubt. Since I've gotten my knee injuries, since my hip injuries as a kid, every single doctor said I would not be able to run fast again. So when was that moment that you wanted to, to quit? In 2018. Like, I already had a letter written up to my agent that I wanted to retire because even for myself, I didn't see no hope. I, 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 could, I could barely run. Like, I could barely run. When I wake up, it was, it was pain. I, I didn't know what to do. Like, I honestly didn't know what to do. I was spending too much money flying all over the world, seeing all these doctors, and nothing came from it. Like, I probably spent, like, $300,000 on going across the world, seeing all these, like, I'm going to be honest, first-class tickets overseas ain't, it, like, I, I remember one time I spent, like, $14,000 on a flight. Like, just to get overseas. What country was that? Well, I went to Germany. I went to Ireland. Well, I went to California. Uh, I went to the UK. Like, I mean, I, I was flying all over the place, man. Seeing the best doctors in the world. Once again, I don't, I don't, if you don't got faith, I don't, I, I don't know what to tell you. And 
how does this feeling compare to the bronze in 2015 in Beijing? Man, it feels a lot more exciting. In 2015, I was a kid, you know what I'm saying? Like I was still, a, I was a teen, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't really understand the beauty of that medal. But this, this moment here beats all that. It beats the gold medal indoors, everything, because of what I've been through. And that's why this medal means more than anything. Trevon, you and Marvin go back a long time in Central Florida. What's yep. the relationship you got with him and what this means for the two of you guys together to be on the podium together? Oh, that's my boy. Like I said, we talk about this every day at practice. Like, we knew what we wanted to do at USA's. We knew what we wanted to do when we came here. Uh, it's, it's just one of those things where we're going to constantly battle with each other. I think the, the fun part about it is that we train with each other so we know, I, you know, sometimes our faults and sometimes our best, you know, so to be able to deal with that is it's crazy. But you've known him since he was like 12 probably, yeah. right? Like how, how young did yeah. you since like 20, since 2012, I've been knowing Marv. Uh, we've been racing probably since 2013, 2014, up until now. Yeah, it's been, it's been a long time. You, you were emotional out there on the track. We saw that on yep. the TV. And it's, it's, it's got to be just all this journey that you've been on. Yep. And, and finally, to be in a moment where it goes one, two, three. What was the atmosphere in the stadium like when it went one, two, three for America? And, and, and when did it hit you that, look what, look, you know, this yeah. was huge? Man, uh, the crowd was crazy. <laughs> you know, like, the hit of screams and the, and the uh, emotion behind every voice in there when we did that, it was, it was incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congrats.